They say salmon in Canada is like a rock star of the culinary world. This high-end protein fish served up on the grill tacos wherever you can. in tacos as sushi or baked. The orange hue of salmon seemingly everywhere. Even in the sky, they say, over the inland Pacific waters of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, where millions of consumers around the world get their salmon, a lot of it from farms. Thousands at a time raised in huge netted pens in frigid waters here, raised by Canadians known as salmon farmers, guys like Ashley Putz, who calls it a stable profession that provides for his family. I have a wife, two kids at home, two little girls, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And Putz says, as an avid fisherman, like many here, angling for wild salmon, he credits farm-raised salmon for taking pressure off the wild salmon stock overfished for decades here to meet the global demand for wild salmon. My personal opinion, I think that if we as a society want to continue to eat fish, it's, we don't really have much of a choice other than to start farming them because the, it helps relieve the pressure on the wild stock and it's, I think it's a sustainable food source for the world. An opinion echoed by longtime commercial salmon fisherman James Wakas, patriarch of a large fishing family here, who also believes salmon farming is responsible for the recent return of wild salmon in these waters. In fact, the last few years, our wild salmon is coming back stronger than ever. Stronger than ever, too, say local residents, is the economy here, thanks to salmon farming and local processing plants here in small towns across Vancouver Island, like Port Hardy, a town of about 4,000 residents relying heavily on the salmon farming industry, says the town's mayor, Hank Bood. The farm fish industry is extremely important to Port Hardy. They provide uh, 150 jobs in the area generally, which for a community as small as Port Hardy, which is 4,000 people, is huge. There is a very big trickle-down effect. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're very happy to have our, our salmon farmers in the local area. Salmon farming's largest employer in British Columbia is Marine Harvest, a Norwegian-owned giant in the global seafood farming industry, more commonly referred to as the aquaculture industry. CCTV recently met up with Marine Harvest's communication manager here in Canada, Ian Roberts, for a look at what goes into raising salmon. In Canada, we produce about 40,000 tons of salmon. Throughout the 70s, Norwegians and, and the Scottish started to perfect it. And in North America, it really was born in the early 1980s. Robert says the farming process begins in hatcheries like this one with imported eggs from Atlantic salmon. It's where we hatch our eggs and we raise the fish when they're very small. And we keep them here for about one year. And when they're ready, we uh, move them from fresh water to the ocean, just like a salmon would swim down the river into the ocean and then we care for them in the ocean for another couple of years. For example, this net pen here would house anywhere between 40 and 60,000 fish. Um, it'll be about 30 meters by 30 meters by 20 meters deep, so there's lots of space for the fish to uh, live until they're harvested at about a six kilo size. And you see one of the fellas here that's cleaning nets, so we wanna make sure that the nets that sometimes get growth on them from natural mussels and, and algae that we clean those nets once a month to make sure that fresh water is uh, flowing through and we're bringing oxygen to the fish when they need it. They'll be picked up at this farm here in a, uh, in a harvest vessel. They'll be immediately put on ice so they're chilled right away and they're hauled to our processing plant where they are offloaded at the processing plant and processed within 12 hours. Uh, there they can be trucked to main city centers within a day or two so we can have fresh fish from this farm to the market uh, in North America within just a couple of days. Asia, too, is a booming market these days for farmed salmon, particularly in China, which is of keen interest to Canadian salmon farmers, says Jeremy Dunn, the executive director of the BC Salmon Farmers Association that promotes the business interests of more than 40 farmed salmon companies in British Columbia. Well, I've traveled extensively in China. I've ate a lot of food in China. They make great food and uh, they like fresh products. One of the most important things to the Chinese people that I know, and my family is uh, Chinese, my wife's uh, from Hong Kong, is fresh. And in British Columbia, we grow great fresh fish. Though 
salmon farming here has been widely criticized by many of Canada's nearly one million Aboriginal people known as the First Nations. First Nations people like Eddie Gardner, with the support of other Canadians, routinely heading up boycotts of farm-raised salmon out front of supermarkets selling it here in Canada. Informing consumers that Canada's wild salmon are at risk of being wiped out by farmed Atlantic salmon that in other waters around Norway and Chile have a history of passing on a fatal influenza-type disease known as infectious salmon anemia, or ISA. This information is health information. It tells you how bad the farmed salmon is. It shows the level of dioxins and poisons which are in this stuff. So as well as bad for your health, it's extremely bad on the environment because the way it's grown in open net pens. And what we're trying to do here is bring this information to the public, let them know how bad the product is, and that way we can stop them buying it and help them to buy healthy choices such as wild salmon. Gardner says he fears that Canada's wild salmon that he says are vital to the environment and to the economy could contract the ISA virus or other diseases through fecal matter and sea lice and parasites flowing from the underwater pens holding farmed salmon. Farmed salmon here in the Pacific that are hatched from the imported eggs of Atlantic salmon. And uh, very often they come with uh, viruses in them. What about ISA? What about ISA? ISA is uh, uh, disease that infects salmon and that's in many farming regions of the world, uh, but uh, not in British Columbia. Under Canadian law, salmon farms must immediately report any sign of ISA or other viruses. But the Canadian government tells CCTV that so far no cases of ISA have been reported. That said... Yeah, this is what we're threatening with salmon farms. Other critics of salmon farms, like biologist Alexandra Morton, claim viruses do exist and that global consumers of farmed salmon need to know about it. The way the farms are right now, they're in these net pens that are hanging from floats. And so the waste of the fish comes out. And we're talking several tons of waste per day, per farm, is going into the water with the viruses and the pathogens and the sea lice covering the seafloor. Morton says while potential viruses in farmed salmon cannot be passed on to people, the impact farm salmon have on wild salmon and the environment is something she says many consumers don't often think about when eating it. People don't know what they're eating and when they get something in a supermarket and it's covered with plastic they trust that it comes from a good place and that it didn't damage the planet to make it. Morton routinely and rather surreptitiously makes her rounds to sushi restaurants around British Columbia, like today in Vancouver, to take samples of farm-raised salmon as part of her own independent testing for potential viruses and disease in locally farmed Atlantic salmon sold in restaurants and presently this seafood market in downtown Vancouver. So we're going in to buy uh, Atlantic farm salmon because the fish farm industry won't let me have one out of the farms, which would be preferable. But uh, they won't let me, so I go in and I buy them. That's how I test for virus. Do you have whole fish? Yeah, I'd like to have this head. Next, she takes the farmed salmon she's just purchased across the street into an underground parking garage. I'm looking for farmed salmon viruses that have caused huge disease outbreaks in Norway and Scotland and Ireland and Eastern Canada and Chile. Um, but the claim is that they're not here. And from my work, I believe they are here. This is the way to set out to prove whether they are or not. Samples of flesh and bits of kidney and the brain, she says, she'll send off to a private lab for testing. She says she'll get the test results from this particular sampling in a few months. You can see the flesh is very orange. Um, for some reason, the salmon farming industry has decided that orange is the color of salmon, and of course they make this color. They get this color from a coloring agent in the dried feed pellets that are fed to farmed salmon. The feed pellets contain fish oil and fish meal and vegetable materials and a colorant to make their flesh colors ranging from orange to pink. The color of a farm salmon without the coloring in the food is gray, like a, a farm salmon on its own is gray, but they add food, of a colorant into the flesh and they pick that colorant. There's what's called a Selmo fan. They can pick the shade of pink based on what their customer wants and I understand the darker the pink, the more expensive. So they try to keep it a little bit lighter, but 
they know the public like pink because they think they're eating a real salmon. So they, they're kind of fooling the people to think that this is a salmon. One of the big differences between the wild and the farm fish is how soft this flesh is. I mean, it's so soft that you can just go in there and grab it. It's very, this fish has not swum hard. He's not migrated, he's not chased a herring. Uh, he's, he's not run from a killer whale. So, you know, very, very soft and uh, very fatty. You touch these things, you get very greasy. Um, you know, it doesn't smell like a salmon. They eat pellets and it smells a lot like the pellets. A couple of years ago, we made a film called Salmon Confidential. Over a million people have watched it online now. And it was really about the research that I'm doing into the viruses and sea lice that are on these juvenile wild salmon. Morton claims farmed salmon would be considered much more environmentally sustainable if these ocean-based farms were moved out of the water and away from wild salmon rows and operated on land, as a small number of companies have already begun doing to contain fish waste on land. When they go in land and they put their farms in tanks, that fish waste is a very rich product to grow other crops. So the inland farmers, some of them take the waste of their fish and they grow several other crops. That is the way of the future. The Chinese are a huge factor because they, there's so many people and they like their fresh seafood. And so if the Chinese decide that this industry has to go on to land, they will be doing the entire Northern Hemisphere a huge favor. Though marine harvest's Ian Roberts refutes Morton's concerns about fish waste pollution, citing independent studies that fish waste pollution does not spread beyond limited areas in and around farm sites here. Fish poop is a natural part of the process, but we're sited in areas that are deep and high currents, and the ocean is a massive place that can take extra nutrients um, and an organic nutrient like fish waste. Jeremy Dunn of the BC Salmon Farmers Association insists that the industry has a transparent record of producing an environmentally sustainable product. Over 30 years, salmon has been grown in British Columbia and has been grown successfully has had no history of uh, infectious disease, has had no history of uh, incredible damage to the environment that some claim. Like the critics, we share one thing with them. We care about the environment, we care about wild salmon in British Columbia. And for those people who care to look, and you don't have to look very hard, there is farm by farm data on the internet, readily available, that will tell you everything you want to know about how salmon is grown in British Columbia. Dunn says, as for Alexandra Morton and other critics here, loud voices represented by very few. But that's not how Morton sees it, she says, considering the huge number of signatures she obtained recently from Canadians and Canadian businesses demanding that elected leaders in British Columbia stop the expansion of salmon farming in the province, delivered on a petition as wide as an accordion. 3,000 pages. 108,000 people signed it saying, please do not expand this industry, and we'll see if they can hear us or not. Continuing to question the environmental sustainability of farm-raised salmon. <laughs>